Hello, this is Danilo Cuella from PeacefulAnarchism.com Coming to you from nature, the spontaneous order that surrounds us all. So there is a 150 year old controversy that I would like to discuss today between Louis Pasteur and Claude Bernard slash Antoine Bechamp. Now Louis Pasteur championed what came to be known as the germ theory and this posited that the body is a sterile environment, that there are no microbes in the body, that any time a person contracts an infectious disease it must have been from an outside attack, an outside invasion, and therefore the proper treatment would be medication, pharmaceuticals, to attack and destroy these pathogens. And therefore he was the what he was the founder of what came to be known as the germ theory, and he developed principles that formed the foundation of vaccines and antibiotic use. And then the other school of thought is the Microzymian theory, championed by Claude Bernard and Antoine Bechamp. And what they posited was very different. They said that the body was not sterile. The body was teeming, is teeming with microbes, microorganisms, both beneficial and harmful. The beneficial bacteria or microbes that inhabit our bodies are not only beneficial, they are necessary for life. They reside in large numbers in the digestive tract, in the stomach, in the intestines, the small intestine, large intestine. They are largely responsible for the processes of digestion, absorption, breaking down of foodstuffs into usable energy for the body and that we also have harmful microorganisms constantly in our bodies, on our skin, in our organs. However, why don't these micro, these harmful microorganisms produce disease? And what they, what they thought was because the immune system, or how they termed it, the terrain of the body was strong enough to keep those harmful microbes in check and the strength of an immune system is also reflective of how many times especially during childhood how many times it has gotten sick and how many times it has produced fever because this fever just like any muscle is exercise for the immune system right when a muscle is encounters resistance, right? It must improve, it must get stronger, it must become more efficient and the same goes with the immune system. For a child that has never gotten sick or very few times has gotten sick and very few times has gotten fever and then that child becomes an adult and then the, the adult starts getting sick, it's the equivalent of an 80 year old man that has not lifted a single weight and then when he's 80 he tries to bench press 100 pounds. So the immune system just like any organ, just like any muscle needs resistance, needs to be challenged for it to remain resilient and strong and effective at what it does. So therefore no infectious disease in history could have been survived by anyone who had not had a strong immune system. Truly, there were, there were people that treated the sick and the infirmed and the weakened, right? There were people that treated them and that did not get sick. And the question should be, why did they not get sick? And it's not because they were not wearing a mask it's not because they were not washing their hands. 
It's not because they didn't have Purell or hand sanitizers. It's because they had a powerful and effective immune system. And that is the linchpin, that is the foundation of true, lasting, vibrant health. And at the end of Louis Pasteur's life, although throughout his entire life, he railed and he criticized the microzymian theorists because he was the proponent of what came to be known as pasteurization, which is heating liquids, especially juices and dairy products, milk, to extremely high temperatures to kill off bacteria, what he considered to be harmful bacteria. However, this renders anything that was previously alive with enzymes and beneficial substances inert and useless to the body. So throughout his life, he criticized and admonished the microzymian theorists. However, there is a story that on his deathbed, he is quoted as saying, Bernard was right. It is the terrain that's important. The terrain makes all the difference. The microbes are nothing. The terrain is everything. So, Louis Pasteur, the founder of pasteurization, the person that came to be that came to theorize and formulate the principles of vaccines and antibiotic use at the end of his life denounced his entire theory and admitted that he was wrong. It is not about medication. It is not about treatment. It is about keeping oneself strong and healthy and protected this is what gives lasting health. This is why it's so powerful, one's diet, to encourage beneficial bacterial growth in the ways of fermented foods, such as kombucha, such as water-based sauerkraut, such as water-based pickles, water-based water fermented pickles, such as kimchi, such as kefir. Many different cultures throughout the world have their own version of fermented foods. And they have endured due to their power and due to their reverence that many cultures throughout the world had for their effectiveness in maintaining vibrant health. And we should take note. It doesn't matter what disease, what infection, what microbes are in the world. Indeed, it doesn't even matter how much Purell hand sanitizer or washing hands you do because we are surrounded, completely surrounded by microbes. Everywhere, constantly, we are being incessantly bombarded with microbes all the time. No amount of hand washing hand sanitizer use, Purell use, mask wearing is going to change that fact. There is no way you can eliminate these microbes. The only defense is to maintain a strong, healthy, resilient immune system. This is the way of vibrant health. It always has been and it always will be. And by the way, fear is paralyzing to your immune system as well. So make sure you go outside, enjoy nature, enjoy the sunshine, and be happy. Life is good. Thank you for listening. This is Danila Quayer from PeacefulAnarchism.com. Have a wonderful day. 
Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it, please feel free to donate and help me interview other fascinating people. You can do so through Patreon. That's patreon.com slash peacefulanarchism to help me out. A dollar a show is all I ask. If you feel so inclined to donate more, please feel free. It will only assist me in spreading the message of freedom and volunteerism that much farther and that much more efficiently. You can also donate to my Bitcoin. My Bitcoin address is in the description to my videos as well as on my website, peacefulanarchism.com. And while you're on my site, there's a donate button to donate through PayPal. If you prefer to donate through PayPal, you can do so with that. But Patreon is a little bit easier for content creators as you can set up a recurring donation if you so desire. Also, while you're on my website, peacefulanarchism.com, please feel free to sign up, enter your email address, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll receive updates every time I post something, a video or an interview. I do not send out any spam. Or you can also follow me on Facebook under facebook.com slash peaceful anarchism or facebook.com slash Danilo Cuellar 3, I believe. Danilo Cuellar 3. So either, either one of those methods, if you are able to donate, I would be most appreciative. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a magnificent day.